Katarina, you are working in the yeah, creative industry. What are you really doing and how are you helping people with your company? Yes, uh, the author of the open ad idea is actually an advertising creative and he ages ago had the idea to sell work by creatives worldwide to companies worldwide. So he came at it from a creative's perspective, enabling a creative from let's say Central Europe or Latin America or Malaysia for that matter to sell their work to companies in the UK, US, but also again in Asia, Latin America, anywhere basically. So what we do is we enable that selling of intellectual property rights worldwide. We created an online platform that enables that, a legal infrastructure that makes the transfer of intellectual property rights analogous to that of the offline world. We also established a remuneration system so that people get paid and they get licenses for their work. So it is, a, in fact, a form of professional managed crowdsourcing. But how can that in practice uh, look like? Because, well, uh, you can let your advertisement be produced in uh, some Eastern European country, but uh, how do I uh, do the briefing? How normally I have the people just around me and can talk to them normally. So uh, does that really work? Yes, we enable the briefing process. We have an online template briefing form and we support the client, the company, in phrasing that brief. It would be much like briefing an advertising agency or a freelance so in a way we're a global freelance resource however we don't source the work of creative we sell the licenses to the work now brief being put online it's just like you would be talking to somebody in person that's a kind of I won't say it's a challenge but it's maybe a prejudice that uh, the client has to overcome that you need to be sitting across the table that you need to be in the same room to be able to brief people that's actually not the case if the brief is precise precise enough, you need never talk to the people. You really can disseminate it online and of course maybe they'll have questions and come back but and you'll interact with them. But at the end of the day, if it's a precise brief, you can put it online or you can put it on paper and it will communicate just as well. And having said that, most companies don't have an issue with that. The issues are confidentiality, which we need to ensure and we do that in as much as is possible in the offline world as well. And intellectual property rights issues and again we look after that. But at the end of the day a good brief will translate but also creatives will go the extra mile to understand the brief to do their research and to come back with adequate response and you make your money uh, by taking uh, a part of uh, the money which is going through yes we, we take half of the license fee we believe we earn it we've taken four years to build the business to build the computer infrastructure the legal infrastructure the remuneration system which is unique creative ideation was normally paid for on a time and materials basis. This is a license to the creative concept that the company will be using and the creative will be selling and we help sell that and we enable the whole process. So we do our part to sell these creatives work. We're effectively their sales team and their new business team. They are 11,000 creative professionals from 125 countries. And the first view of uh, half of it sounds very high. Huh? How did the uh, creative people react on that? Well, our creative people know where we add value actually. We've had long-standing relationships with many of these creatives. Again, we started inviting them on board four years ago, almost five years ago. And we, we add value to them in, in many ways other than just selling their ideas. So I, I understand that, uh, that there's not been objection. And again, we do earn those 50%. You know, there's been investment into the company and we facilitate the process and we've got our cost to cover as well so um, I think still works out well for everybody. And what about competitors? We don't really have competitors that are anywhere near where we are. End of last year I saw companies forming that are copying our business model but they've not come as far neither with regard to the community that they would have formed nor the legal infrastructure or the payment structure that we've established. What is your personal background and uh, of the, your co-founders? Um, what led you to that point, to that business idea? Yes, the author of the idea 
idea. A co-founder of mine actually owns an advertising agency in Central Europe. It's a very successful agency and so hence the idea to sell work by creatives or by an agency anywhere worldwide. My background is also all advertising. After, after university I studied electrical engineering. After that I went and founded, co-founded an advertising agency with a couple of acquaintances of mine. And then I worked in television for a good seven years. I hosted and produced a show about advertising and later I was lured to set up open ads. So our backgrounds are, are advertising based. We managed to attract the right tech people as well to help us build the system and perhaps most importantly we managed to attract the creatives by entrusting us with what is their most valuable asset, their work, their intellectual property. So uh, being a successful entrepreneur, Savan, uh, what if you could give uh, one thing to uh, other starters, one learning, what would it be? I'd say if, if, I, if I can do one and expand on it a little bit, the first is that you obviously have to answer a need in the market, a niche, a need, a pain point, a requirement. You have to have a service or a product that is desired or requested. And other than that, just follow your dream and persist. I think persistence is probably one of the most important things because it is a business of rejection. At the end of the day, most people will reject changing the status quo and very few will be early adopters. So I think you have to go into this understanding that not everybody is going to fall in love with every novelty immediately and that you have to be an evangelist and you have to really believe in what you're doing because otherwise you won't be able to convince anybody else that it's a good idea. At least initially you know there will come a tipping point uh, so to say where the masses will recognize that this is a viable proposition but prior to that I think you have to put in a lot of work full commitment and uh, just don't give up hey thank you for that little insight and yeah I wish you success with your business and that lots of companies and also the creatives come to your service well thank you very much we also wish for that thank you for having me